Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. We're just going to be looking who's written a book called Ethics, Evil and Fiction, Oxford Clarendon Press, 1999. The atheist Colin uh, McGinn um, states this in his book about uh, objective morality. And uh, I'm just quoting this and then just going to reflect on it just for a few minutes. When I assert this is good or that is evil, I do not mean that I experience desire or aversion or that I have a feeling or a liking or an indignation. These subjective experiences may be present but the judgment points not to a personal or subjective state of mind but to the presence of an objective value in the situation. What is implied in this objectivity? Clearly, in the first place, it implies independence of the judging subject. If my assertion this is a good is valid, then it is valid not for me only, but for everyone. If I say this is good and another person referring to the same situation says this is not God, one or other of us must be mistaken. The validity of moral judgment does not depend upon the person by whom the judgment is made. In saying that moral values belong to the nature of reality, the statements implied an objectivity which is independent of the achievements of persons in forming their lives with these values and is even independent of their recognizing their validity. Whether we are guided by them or not, whether we acknowledge them or not, they have validity. Objective moral value is valid independently of my will and yet is something which satisfies my purpose and completes my nature. A response to that um, by John uh, Cottingham, Philosophers of Finding Fresh Meaning, Truth, Goodness and Beauty. Um, we read, since McGuinn accepts the first premise of the moral argument, he suggests that it is possible to detach moral objectivity from any world religious worldview so that we do not need to believe in God in order to find morality both important and binding. Here McGinn exhibits a common confusion in that he conflates the argument for God as the ontological basis for objective moral values with the unbiblical epistemological claim that belief in God is necessary conditions. Now what do I think about this? Uh, my thoughts. Um, I think that uh, the question has, um, when he says that morality is not connected to individual persons um, and the judgment is independent of any individual, then Christians would not disagree with that, Christianity would not disagree with that in terms of human persons, but the question is um, where does he locate the object of morality? He can't get out of the is or distinction. He can't get out of the naturalistic fallacy. So how does he get out of the problem? To say that reality is is the way it is, and and that reality shows us what morality is, that that's not possible because nature can't tell you what morality is. So he's he's trying to detach himself from personhood and give some kind of objectivity to morality but it is difficult to see where he might locate that if he locates it in an idea then where is that idea sustained how is that idea sustained in terms of who states that idea who produced that idea so if he tries to argue for a physical objective morality he tries to argue for a platonic idea. Either way, he still doesn't get objective morality.
I think for a Christian, morality is rooted in the nature of God. And the nature of God is a God who is and relational. That is to say, he is the I and the Thou. And that is the center of morality. All the laws and all the revelation that we have of morality come from a reflection of the nature of God. Because we're made in the image of God as human beings, we have this inbuilt capacity for relationship. And therefore, because we're in relationship, we are made for a specific way. That is to say, it's a loving relationship. And every human being knows this subconsciously. So the ground of morality is in the nature of God. Love cannot be love unless it is free. You cannot have love in a materialistic universe where there isn't even free will because we're just molecules in motion being affected by other molecules. So I think that for me, uh, the way I understand that if you try to build a morality based on nature then you're inevitably going to be a relativist. There's no way out of the box. But if you believe in God then there is necessarily right and wrong, there is good and evil. And all the laws in the Old Testament and New Testament reflect the nature and the attributes of God. As to there is a historical reality that there is a development. God reveals himself in, in accordance with how we can relate to him. So in the Old Testament he relates to the people there in consistency with his attributes but in a way that the people of that time can relate to him. But the final relation came in Christ where that shows us the full understanding of who God is. So I'm recognizing that there is a development in, in our understanding of how we do ethics throughout history. But that's in the na not, that is not inconsistent with God's nature. God has revealed himself in history, but according to each culture and the way the capacity for how they can understand and also for his redemptive purposes. So he revealed himself in the Old Testament the way he did for his redemptive purposes in order to fulfill the final redemption in Christ. But without God as a reference point it's difficult to believe in any good or bad because at the end of the day you are allowed to do what you want there is no accountability whatsoever um, those are my thoughts about this atheist Colin McGinn uh, feel free to share your own thoughts about his, his thinking and discuss and debate amongst yourselves um, I'd be interested to hear what you think. I'd be interested to hear your ideas. And uh, if it stimulates debate, uh, this video, uh, I'll be very pleased. Thank you and take care. What do you think? Let me know. I'll be making video responses in the next few weeks to whatever arguments you make under this video. Thank you.